Yeah, so by definition, a will is that legal declaration that a person will make showing or trying to show cause how their properties will be executed or distributed after their death. So this is in line with the law of succession. So there are those requirements that have been put by the act on what should compose a will. So in order to make a will, a person must be of sound mind and must have reached his majority. In other words, we are saying a child cannot make a will. In Kenya, majority years is 18 years. So if you are less than 18 years, the law assumes you are minor and you cannot make any informed decision. You cannot marry, you cannot be married, you cannot impregnate someone, you cannot make a will, right? Two, a person may dispose of all their property through a will. In other words, we are trying to say, if a person so wishes and they have attained the number one, they are of sound mind and they have reached 18 years, they can make a will to dispose all their properties, what they own, through any secular, any law, or any religious law that they choose. You cannot be coerced. I said in the African tradition religion, our traditional or customary laws overrides the constitutional law. So where the custom so decides to apply, then the written law cannot, cannot change such a decision. So we should all understand that. That's why we are talking of any secular, any religious or any written law. Then a female person has the same capacity to make a will as a male. Now this one again will be dependent on the traditional beliefs or the religious beliefs. There are beliefs where the females are not allowed to do or they cannot execute some mandate. But we are saying legally, any person, whether female or male, they have a capacity to make a will. Fourthly, when a person makes or purposes to make a will, they are deemed to be of sound mind. Look at number one. For them to be able to make a will, they are supposed to be of sound mind. Now, there comes a time when the state of mind, or let's say you are not, you are not sane, now, when you are talking of sanity, you know, you can have a temporary insanity. For example, when you are drunk or if you imbibe some drugs, you cannot think as a sane person. But if you look at the last sentence, we are saying here that the burden of proof, let me highlight that. We are saying that the burden of proof that a testator or the person who is making a will was at the time not of sound mind shall be upon the person who so alleges. In other words, you are saying, if Mbogwa here makes a will when they are drunk, the person who can only confirm that they were not drunk is those people who are alleging. It is very difficult to prove whether someone was of sound mind or otherwise, isn't it? Five, a person may by will appoint an executor or executors, and this is the case in so many in so many cases of succession, because you may lack what we call the 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 expertise in coming up with a will. Most people will go ahead and employ an executor or someone who has a legal background to be able to make a will. So an executor is a person to whom the execution of the will of a deceased person is by the testator's appointment confined. In other words, we are saying many people, of course, you are making a will so that when you die, you die peacefully and you leave everyone at peace. So when your will will be interpreted, Joseph Mwangi. 
when you join the class, you mute. Welcome. So we are saying that the executor plays a very important uh, 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 role because it is through the executor that the test data confines. Yeah, and your what you want to Siri, I will let you attacka. Kuandika will. We go on. Then lastly, not lastly, six. If a will or any part of a will was made by fraud or coercion or by such importunity, which takes away the free agency of the testator or has been induced by mistake, the will of that part of it is void. In other words, we are saying, if at all someone comes and say that the will that I made was due to coercion, I'm trying as much to avoid naming names, but if you remember, we had the case of the Keremas. You remember the Kerema family? There were a lot of back and forth when Mze was in the hospital. I think the daughter was saying that the father has made a will through coercion. If it is determined that you are coerced to make a will, then the will becomes void. In other words, we are saying it becomes useless. It cannot come to pass. Now we'll see thereafter, or we will see how the will or the condition is supposed to be made. Even the signing, the signature, if, and we have these people who are specialists, we call them profilers. If a profiler looks at your certificate, uh, at your will, and they realizes that it is like you are coerced to make it, you didn't make it at free will. They'll just make it voidable. Voidable is to say it will not apply. And lastly, a will may be made orally. A will may be made orally. In other words, we are saying it needs not be documented, but it will not be valid unless, now these are the conditions of an oral will. One, it is made before two or more competent witnesses. That is persons of sound mind and full age. So you can see the conditions of oral will. So mzea meka, amezeeka, ameita watu wake, wawili, who will be the witnesses. But these people should be of sound mind and of full age. Two, the testator dies within three months of the date of making the will. Even while at it, the, we, we, we still insist that this will should not take a lot of time without being documented. Now, the challenge of oral wills, if someone decides to come and say what was not said by the person who died, and we don't have, let's say, a, a video or rather a recording of what they said, these people can connive. The two incidences can connive and change the whole will of the testator. That's why we are saying this should be done three months. But if this person dies after three months, again, the oral will becomes void. In other words, we are saying, if it will last for more than three months, it ought to have been documented. Three, an oral will made by a member of the armed forces or merchant marine, now we are talking of the people who go for long-term operations. For example, when our armed forces goes to Somalia, we are not very sure how long the fight will last with the Al-Shabaab. You can live today and you'll be coming back after three years. If such a person makes a will, or let's say you are a sailor, yeah? Sailors are drivers of these big ships. Some of them may even take six, eight months in the sea before they reach their destination. If that is the case, we are saying an oral will made by a member of the armed forces or merchant marine during a period of active service. An active service is when they are outside there to perform their duty. is valid for more than three months after the date of making the will, provided he dies in the same period of active service. In other words, if a military person leaves this country and goes to Somalia. Let's say they stay there for eight months. 
And then while there, you see the three months have elapsed. So we are against number two. But because they are still in active operation and they die there before they come back, then that will, will be valid, although it was oral. So if you are in operation, an active operation, that will may last for more than three months, as long as you die when you are in the active service. Four, an oral will is made after a written will has not been revoked. The oral will is not valid. So you can see the law is giving more weight in a written will than the oral will. In other words, we are saying, if an oral will is made after a written will has not been revoked, or if what you had already documented has not been destroyed, then this will will not be valid. Especially if it is contrary to the written will. Now, if a written will is made after an oral will, the written will will be valid. In other words, we are saying what is documented is more permanent than what is made already. Are we there? Unless some property disposed of by the oral will is not disposed of by the written will. In other words, we are saying they should not conflict. Otherwise, the written will prevails. Are we there? If there is any conflict in evidence of witness as to what was said by the deceased in making an oral will, the oral will is not valid. So you can imagine. If the people that we are citing in number one disagrees, they make the whole will invalid. So far as its constant are proved by a competent independent witness. In other words, we are saying, unless now we get another person who was there to qualify the statements that these people are not agreeing on. So an, an independent witness is one who is not a beneficiary or the spouse of the beneficiary under a will. And I'll give you a scenario. If, for example, you make a will with your father, you are dependent. In other words, you are a direct beneficiary. And maybe in the will, part of the property has been bequeathed to you. In other words, you are an inheritor. Are we there? You are an heir. So if you conflict, you stand a higher ground to give misleading information than someone who is not profiteering or who is not benefiting from the will. And that's why we are saying that if the independent witness is one who is not a beneficiary of the spouse who's been identified under the will, then that case may hold water. But if it is a direct beneficiary, then there comes in the challenges. Now, in writing a will, a will is not valid unless it fulfills the following conditions. So these are the conditions of qualifying a will. Number one, the testator must sign the will. Testator is the person making the will. Or he must affix his mark to the will. And the mark could be either a thumb print, if they don't know how to write, the year stamp, or the year ring mark. Or the will must be signed by some other person in the presence and by the direction of the testator. Testator, we said, is that person who is qualified. So the testator must have an must standing. In other words, we are saying they must have a desire to make a will. They should not be coerced. So coercion, where coercion sets in, it eliminates the will. Of course, the meaning of will in English is you are doing it without coercion. I'm making a will. You should be willing to document your desires. That's what we are calling animas testandi. Yeah, so you should make a mark. Two, the signature or the mark of the testator or the signature of the person signing for him must be placed such that it shall appear that it was intended to give effect to the writing as a will. Normally the signature 
or mark should be put at the foot of the wheel. Every page. And I said where there is some um, confusion, we may need the expertise of a profiler to show whether it was at wheel or coercion. Three, the wheel must be attested by two or more competent witnesses. One person cannot be a witness. I can be a witness, but when you die, I change everything to benefit from what you said. So they should be two or more. And by competency, we are saying they should be able to understand. So each of whom must have seen, therefore they should not be blind. So I couldn't get you a good I felt. So there are no issues of touching and feeling in the weed. You must see, you must hear. So the test data sign or affix his mark to the wheel or have seen some other person sign the wheel in the presence and by the direction of the test data. You see the test data could not be able to write, but they can authorize the year executor to do so on the year behalf. Are we together? And that is why we are saying they should affix the year damp print. Nowadays, you know, even the cases of people stealing title deeds and changing them are very high. Right now, when you go to the land's office and you are the bearer of the title, there is a way that they are able to do the uh, due diligence. Of course, they'll ask you for the documentation. That is your national ID, your photo. You see, that's one mechanism of trying to identify you. But more importantly, where you are transferring that property, wakati unauza shambalako, they don't accept signature. So you sign, then they take your thumb print. Now the most secure way of securing document is by affixing your thumb print, because this is the only uh, the only thing that is unique. Actually, IDs can be faked; they can be stolen. You've seen people using IDs to register in PESA to defraud banks, etc. Are we together? So thumb print is very important. So it is not necessary that more than one witness be present at the same time. No particular form of attestation is necessary. In other words, we are saying you can call your witnesses at different times, as long as the information that you are giving is the same. They should not be there at the same time. In a court of law, witnesses are called in separate platforms. Why? The prosecutor needs to know whether the year stories are telling. And in vital cases, for example, cases of, let's say, manslaughter or murder, they'll make sure that they collect all the witnesses before they communicate, then lock them in different cells. Why? To cut the communication so that they'll be getting independent witness story from each of the witnesses. So it's the case. Number four, a testator may refer in a will or a condicil. A condicil is normally an annexer. You know, when you do a will, you can do a will today, let's say you are 30 years. By and by, you attain 40 years. So instead of recalling the will that you had done, you can add something. What you're adding is called a condicil. So a condicil is a testamentary instrument that is done in relation to the will, but it does not withdraw or alter what is in the will. It adds what is in the will. Someone who is on, oh no. let me try to establish who is here. Naomi Mary Wambua, how are you? Naomi. Yes, sir. Now mute yourself. Joseph Mwangi. Joseph, how are you? Joseph. We can't hear you. Seem to have a problem with your mic. In. And you are logged in two gadgets. Why are you logged in two gadgets? 
You are the one who is forcing uh, me to go to my class. Why are you logged in two gadgets? Uh, let me mute one. No, mute both. Okay, okay. We have Techno SA6S. Mute yourself kindly. Alternatively, I can do it permanently from my end, which will not be a good gesture. Because if you want to start a, to ask a question, you can't. So Joseph, mute yourself. I can mute yourself in this other gadget. So that we minimize the noise. So we go on. <clears throat> I was in number four. I was talking of the condition and I was saying that this is an additional document that puts more information into the wheel. It is not supposed to alter what is in the wheel. Are we there? So once a condition is put in the wheel, the assumption is it forms part of the wheel. Five, if one of the persons attesting to the wheel or his spouse is also a beneficiary of the wheel, or is appointed executor in the will, the will is valid as to the number of witnesses. In other words, we are saying, we cannot stop a spouse or a beneficiary from being a witness. However, and this is what I was talking about, a bequest, a bequest is a donation, an inheritance, a gift, etc. However, a gift to an attesting witness including any direction as to payment of costs or charges, or a gift to his or her spouse shall be void unless the will is also attested by at least two additional competent independent witnesses. You can see the complication. We cannot stop you from being a witness, but if there is something that will be giving you a gift, if there is a statement that is there, we need again two witnesses to attest. Are we there? Six, when a person is appointed an executor of a will, he is not thereby disqualified as a witness to prove the execution of the will or prove its validity or invalidity. In other words, we are saying an executor can also be a witness. Yeah? The executor is the person who will be left to execute the will once the person dies. And lastly, a will drawn up in a foreign country in accordance with the laws of that country shall be deemed to be valid in Kenya, even though it is not drawn up as above. It is valid to the property in that country. It is valid if the testator is a national of that country, either at the time the will was made or at the time of his death. Right now, our, our constitution recognizes dual citizenship. In other words, you can be a citizen in Kenya and a citizen in America or China. Let's say you are owning a property in China. The laws of Hong Kong are not same as the laws of Kenya. So if you own a property in China, it will be executed as per the laws of China. Are we together? So although you are here in the country, it will be executed as per the laws of that country. So I think that is clear. Then revocation. In what cases do we recall the will? One, a will can be recalled or altered by the maker of it. Of course, this now, this common sense. If I made a will and I decided to alter it, I can tear it apart, destroy, and then make a new one all together, yeah, at will. And that's why we are saying a will is said to be abulatory. Abulatory from the word abulance. Abulance means moving. So it's like a will is walking, it's a walking document. It is not a permanent document. You can do it today, one year down the line, alter it or destroy and do a new one all together. No one can stop you from doing that, it's your property. Two, a will is revoked by the later marriage of the maker, unless the will is expressed to be made in contemplation of marriage 
with a specific person and the subsequent marriage is to that person. If you recall, when you are talking of intestacy, one of the precondition of the widow or the widower getting the inheritance of the deceased who died intestate without a will is as so long as they remain a widow or a widower. If they marry or get married, that right is lost. Are we together? The same case here, we are talking of a will is revoked by later marriage. In other words, we are saying, if I made a will when I was marrying the first wife, no sooner than I marry the second wife, the first will cannot exist. And this is very deliberate so that you don't jeopardize the latter marriage. Are we together? Three, a will or a condition or any part of it can be revoked only by making another will or condition declaring intention to revoke it or by burning, tearing or otherwise destroying the will with the intention of revoking it by the testator or some other person at his direction or by subsequent marriage as in two above. You can see how marriages, how strong marriages are. The reason why we are doing this, and I explained in our first class, you've seen most uh, homicides or murder, especially in America, where the wife recognizes or realizes that they've been identified in the will, and the man has, let's say, quite good way of. If, for example, the net worth of Muse is, let's say, two billion, you can organize for the Yamada if they were a sponsor and they were aging by, and you get married to a younger boy and you start enjoying that money. So the whole thing about the will being revoked by the later marriage is to try and cure scenarios of homicides where people kill each other to take advantage of their wealth. Are we there? Then four, a written will can never be revoked by an oral will. So the written will prevails. So if you want to revoke it, write another will. You cannot revoke it orally. And we say the conditionalities of an oral will it can only be valid for three months unless you are at war or you are a sailor and your inactive operation. Five, no obliteration, interlineation, or other alteration made in a will after the execution of it, and it has been signed by the testator and witnesses, shall have any effect unless the alteration is signed and attested as required for a will. In other words, we are saying, should we realize that there is some alteration or cancellation in the way the will was signed originally, or there are some elements or statements that have been canceled and altered, then that will, will not be void. In other words, it will be revoked. So if a will is so altered, then the will is deemed to be duly executed. If the signature of the testator and the subscription of the witnesses is made in the margin or on another part of the will opposite or near to the alteration, or it is referred to in a memorandum written at the end of the, at the end or some other part of the will and is so signed and attested. In other words, we are saying, should you think of altering then you should sign, you should annex or append your signature next to the original signature, but you don't alter. Are we there? And also you can do some notes. This is what we are calling memorandum. Memorandum is a short note for memory. You should tell people why the alteration, either at some point of the will or at the end of the will. And lastly, there are typewritten or printed will purposed to have been executed by the filling of any blank spaces. 
there shall be a presumption that the will has been duly executed. So we are saying where, for example, most people when we are doing agreement, we say on this dash, day of dash, year dash, you get. So we leave them blank so that at the time of execution, that is when we are going to write the dates. That's what that statement portrays. Any question? A will which has been wholly revoked in manner cannot be revived except by re-executing the will. In other words, we are saying once we revoke a will, unless it is written again to revive it, otherwise it will be assumed not to be existing. Characteristics of a will. Anytime this meeting ends, just join with the same link. We have one minute or so. Yeah? We'll just join in. Don't wait. I'll not send any other link. Yeah? Characteristics of a will. One, should be dispositionary. In other words, a will disposes the deceased property. It tells the executor how they are going to share the property once the deceased goes. Two, formality. For a will to be valid, it must be written and signed. Should be formal by the deceased and the appropriate witnesses. Remember we're saying that oral wills are only valid if the testator dies within three months. It should be R, not area. Then alterations, alterations to the will, e.g. through codicils, need to be signed and witnessed appropriately. Posthumous effect. Now this is after death. A will only takes effect after the testator is dead.